So what strategies or techniques have you found helpful in managing your own boundaries effectively? And how have these strategies contributed to your overall recovery? One strategy that's super helpful for me, even before I think to set a limit or a boundary or whatever, is to think like, what is my goal in this? And in DBT, we think about there being sort of three overall goals, like getting an objective met, uh, setting a limit for your own self-respect, and then setting a limit to help the relationship. And so whenever I go into communicating with someone about a, a limit or a boundary, I think it's my main priority to get an objective met, like asking a boss for a raise. It's like, okay, I need this thing. That's it, right? Or do I want to stress the relationship more where I'm going to be much more willing to negotiate the limit or much more willing to like use a lot of validation for the other person so they still like respect me and hear me. But it's such like a, a dynamic process of figuring out like what is the main priority while also like not necessarily neglecting the other ones. Because even in a situation like, for example, where I'm asking a boss for a raise, I also have to do a lot of things to attend to the relationship, reminding the other person why this would help me, you know, be a better employee or whatever. And often in that situation, I'm going to be really mindful of my own self-respect too, right? Like if it's a situation where I can't go on any longer doing the amount of work I'm doing for the pay I'm receiving, then I might have to, you know, figure out like, can I handle this sort of blow to my own self-respect for the sake of the relationship and maintaining this job? Or do I have to kind of emphasize one or the other? And so I think that for me has been a huge strategy um, in figuring out how to actually like navigate boundaries because I know what angle I'm approaching it. Like, you know, there's many different types of boundaries and ways we can go about it. It took me a long time to set boundaries for myself, but it didn't take me as long of a time to respect other people's boundaries. And so once I got to that point of learning what my boundaries were and how to set them for other people so that they knew was I would ask myself, well, what would I what would I do or what would I suggest to my friend if she was going through this? So, for example, a few years ago, you know, I had to cut ties with a family member because they did a lot of awful things. And it was hard for me because I loved them. I was so close to my family. So I really struggled with this decision on what can I do? Because this family member made it clear that her bad behavior was going to continue to happen and she wasn't going to take any responsibility for it. And I just couldn't put up with that. I started to think like, well, what would I, if my kid was going through this as an adult, or if I had a friend going through this, what would I say? I realized that I wouldn't want my kids or my, my friends to put up with this. And, you know, here's what I would think, here's what I would suggest that I do. And so I applied that for myself. And so that might not be the greatest strategy, but it really helps me because I have much more compassion for other people than myself. And so I sort of realized um, if I wouldn't want my loved one to go through this or to put up with some type of nonsense, then I shouldn't have to put up with it either. That's really relatable. Um, really, really relatable. <laughs> A couple of things to add. Um, one is uh, observing other people's boundaries, um, as in observing what they are and how they set them. So I recently did a retreat uh, in India, a BPD and healing retreat, and the person organizing the retreat from the very beginning sets her boundaries very explicitly, very um, clearly and also very compassionately. Um, and one of her boundaries was I, during meal times, I eat by myself and in silence. And I was like, wow, this is amazing, you know, and I just had so much respect for her and just observing that and remembering my own reaction to it helps me to think, well, you know, what does that kind of boundary look like for me in, in my daily life and what would I like it to be? Um, so I found that really helpful. And then the other thing is taking ownership uh, for my own boundaries. Um, and I have an example from work on that. So um, I went down to four days a week uh, for a while because I wanted to start building my freelance business and transition to working for myself. And when you work four days a week, uh, your boss gives you Enough work for five, for sure, at the very least. 
Um, and everybody always forgets that you're not around on a Friday. So you get all these meeting requests and all these things that come through. Um, and so that's when for me, it was very clear. I had to take ownership. This is my boundary. It's not up to other people to remember, oh, Selene doesn't work on a Friday. I mean, yes, in an ideal world, that would happen. Um, but very often it doesn't. And it's therefore, it's my boundary. It's up to me to remind people. I don't need to scream about it. I don't need to be mean or anything. Just remind people, no, the Friday is the day where I do my personal project and this is how it's going to work. And this is so taking ownership for our boundaries, I think is really helpful. I remember like uh, at the very beginning when I started to consult my therapist and she was telling me about her appointment timings and then she asked me are you okay with it because she was giving me a time when I had to adjust a lot of things I had to adjust like a family gathering I had to maybe skip a class in college and I said yeah I mean I have to do these or these things but it's fine by me and then she said that's not fine I asked if you're free and this does not sound like you're free so I said yeah but I'll adjust and then she said yeah but you don't have to like you can't tell me what works for you and that was like mind blown moment for me I was like I can and so it was it was the very beginning when I started like learning about what worked for me and what were the things that I liked? What were the things that were okay with me? If somebody else was coming and saying this, 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 will I be okay with it? Will this be a thing that does not work for me? These are the questions that I never paused to ask before and I started asking them. And then I realized that I've always felt the resentment for a reason. It does not mean that we do not, not necessarily have boundaries. We just do not know them. So if you start learning that yes these are my limits and these are the absolute boundaries that I need people who are close to me to follow then we are going to we have to very assertive for like a very simple example I don't talk to people over social media or even over phone calls after like 11 at night I have like a early job and I have a very disruptive sleep schedule so it's important for me that I stay away from screen before bedtime and I used to flex this a lot before because I would be like, yes, I have to be there for a friend. But now it's kind of like strict that I have an emergency number and some people close to me have it. And it's like, if you really, really need me, then you can call me on this number after 11. But if not, then avoid because I'm not going to pick it up. And I think it is as simple as that. It's like you have to learn to listen to yourself that what you want and what works for you and then respectfully communicate it and be assertive about it. I think... Once I learned to trust myself on doing this, it became easier to respect other people's boundaries because now I know that, yes, this is something that is healthy and this is something, a two-way thing, and they're not doing anything intentionally to hurt me. They're just protecting their own lines. I don't know if anyone else has experienced this, but I have found that there is definitely some trial and error in setting boundaries in terms of how much of a situation are you taking into account? Because I have definitely had moments where I thought I was setting a boundary, but I was only reacting to one part of an interaction. As an example, there have been moments where my husband might say something insensitive to me, and my response is to be kind of self-righteous, and you can't speak to me this way, and if you talk to, talk to me like this, I'm out. And I get very wrapped up in that moment, completely ignoring something that happened before he said something insensitive. Maybe I said something insensitive. I activated his emotions. And then, and then I'm like, oh, but I'm setting a boundary. But it's, it's really not. It's me tricking myself into thinking I'm setting a boundary so that I don't actually have to take accountability for being a jerk two minutes ago. And it's frustrating because it's not like I sit there doing that on purpose. You know, in that moment, I'm like, ooh, this is my opportunity to stand up for myself. Not giving two thoughts to the fact that I actually owe him an apology. Yeah, it's like, it's like the boundaries we set. It also like matters on the context on how we set them. Because this is something that I also struggle with. It's like, I have 
a boundary in my head. Somebody cannot come and talk to me about my profession. And uh, for example, when it's me having a casual conversation with one of my friends or my boyfriend about my profession and they give an opinion which I don't agree with, um, that boundary would flare up and be like, remember this line that they can't cross? But when I kind of went into an open discussion with them about the same thing, I gave them the permission to it was it's a conversation it's not a monologue it's it's some it's where i give an input and it's where the other person gives me an input and that's how conversations work but if i'm upset with one of the inputs it does not mean that i'm like they're crossing a boundary or they're disrespecting my boundary it's just that it's very important to know what the context is i guess which is very difficult when we're in the emotional mind which most of the times I am in the heat of an argument. So it's just take a deep breath, take a pause, just ass like assess the situation. Like why did the person say what they say? And what is the, what did I say before that? And is, does this really mean that they're violating a boundary or is this just me being very protective about my space? I think because from somebody with absolutely no concept of boundaries to someone who has just learned the concept of it we can grow from like absolutely no lines and bending over people from being hyper protective about ourselves very fast so that line can get a bit tricky and it's something that i also struggle with very very often yeah and i think that illustrates perfectly the fact that boundaries are very nuanced and not as simple as oh here is a massive wall that is always there like they depend on the context like you said they also depend on the relationship we have different boundaries with different people in our lives like there are conversations that i'm very comfortable and happy to have with some people but if someone you know suddenly kind of barged into my space and was like why don't you want children I demand an explanation you know I would be really uncomfortable because I barely know them but if a close friend was like hey like I just want to know a bit more you know you mentioned that maybe you don't want to have kids like are you comfortable to talk about it then I'd be totally fine so it's interesting and I guess it echoes back to uh um, Lina's point about the difference between limita limits and, and boundaries as well. But even boundaries, they're not set in stone for everybody across everything or across all times of our lives as well. They change, which makes it really hard because it's that trial and error of like, I sense something's there. Okay, do I put it up? Is that the right time? Does it... <laughs> um, mm. Well, thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you got a nugget of wisdom to take with you on your journey. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications so you do not miss a single episode. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.